Hey y'all, hey, it's your girl A. Hey, what's up, y'all? What's up, divas? What's up, divas? What's up, YouTube? What's up, everybody? What's up, fam? What's up, friends? What's up, everybody? Welcome back to my channel. You already know it's your girl A. Hey, we came to talk about a lot of shit today, okay? Had to get that out. You know, I was really trying to rhyme and shit, but then I started losing my breath, okay? I had to take take a deep breath. But what's up, everybody? What's up? Welcome back to my channel. I hope y'all all have, like, a really great day, a blessed day, an amazing day, evening, afternoon. Whenever you're watching this, girl, I hope you all are having a really good one. Stay blessed, stay safe, stay out the way and mind your business, okay? Well, at least try to mind your business. I know it's hard for some of y'all to not mind your business because I sometimes, look, I be telling y'all, I like to mind my business. I always say, I be trying to mind my business. I tell that to my daughter Tati, but she'll never be believing me. She'd be like, no, you don't. No, you don't. I'd be like, you got a nerve to talk, girl. But anyway, so I hope y'all are having like a really blessed day, okay? Have a blessed day. So, you know, it is the beginning of the week. Today is Monday, but when y'all see this, it'll be Wednesday. You know, I'll be prepared for y'all like today. I came through prepared for y'all, you know what I'm saying? Put on my little headband wig back again. Thought I would look cute for y'all. Like I told y'all last week, I'm trying to look cute for y'all, presentable. And I feel like this, when I put on a wig, well, not a wig, but just when I have my hair down, OK, I don't look so big on camera. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like the camera makes me look bigger. I've noticed like I guess it's the lens that I use. It kind of like blurs the background on its own. You know what I'm saying? But this particular lens, I noticed it just the camera always makes you look like you've gained some weight. So and I hate when I wear it's not that I hate when I wear a ponytail, but I hate to see how broad my shoulders look like I'm so big. Like I'm not big, but I'm just like, I don't know what's the right word to use. Okay. But I just feel like when I put on a wig or my hair is a little bit longer, um, I just look a lot more presentable. You don't see my, my, my arm. Like, I don't know. You know what it is about me? I'm very self-conscious and I really need to learn how to become a lot more comfortable in my skin. You know what I'm saying? Like when I say oh, in my skin, cause I'm comfortable in this black skin, baby. Okay. I'm, I'm very comfortable in this melanated skin. Okay. That's for damn sure. But what I mean by that is just like my features, like, okay, we're not all made the same. So like I was born with a short neck. Now y'all like, bitch, what? <laughs> Like when I say a short neck, like I don't, okay. Like my neck is not as long as like average people's necks would be like, it ain't no, I'm um, Benzino neck. Okay. It's definitely not that. Let's just get that out the way. It's definitely not a Benzino neck, but I noticed that when I gain weight, I guess that's for everybody then, right? When they gain weight, like some of my neck disappears because it's already like, to me, I always thought my neck was like short, but then I could be wrong. I, you know, because then when I look at my old pictures, I noticed like one, my head is long. And so sometimes when I'm too thin, I kind of look like one of those little dashboard bobbleheads to me. You know what I'm saying? That's what I look like. And if I can point that out about myself, then I'm pretty sure you guys are too. But I just noticed that I would, I would like to have like a longer neck, you know what I'm saying? And I've said this to you guys before, like they should have like an, a neck extension. Like I know it's probably like a, not a surgery that you could like grow your neck, you know what I'm saying? But something, something, I don't know, you could take some pills or something and your neck could get a little bit longer. Maybe I could wear like one of those braces on my neck, like Africans do and make my neck longer. I just feel like a more elongated neck. That's what I'm saying. I'm not saying I'm trying to walk around here like a giraffe, bitch, but I like to see people with like a nice size neck. It's just very attractive to me. I don't know. And then when I notice when I lose weight, when I gain weight my neck is like less predominant like it's really not there like it'd be feeling like my head is sitting on my shoulder this is when i start feeling like i'm out benzino's other daughter are we related somehow you know are we part of the short neck crew like i don't like being the short neck all right i i, I guess i'm not really a tall person either i'm I'm 5'4". Tati will tell you that I'm 5'3". Tati will even try to tell you, my daughter Tati will even try to tell you that I'm 4'11". Okay, she'll try to tell you all type of shit. But that's not me. I'm not 4'11". Okay, I'm 5'5", I'm 5'4". Five, 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 she keeps saying I'm 5'3", because we was in Home Depot one time. You know how they be having a little tape measures up against the wall? And so you could stand up against it. She gonna go off of that. Like, I was, and it said 5'3". And I was like, I am not 5'3". That's not what my driver's license says. My driver's license says 5'5". Five, five. She's like, yeah, and you also could give them your height. So yeah, I did give them that. So, because that's what I want to be. But I'm not, my real height is like 5'4". It might even be 5'3 and three, in, in, in three quarters. I don't know. But I'm not really that tall. You know what I'm saying? I'm not really that short neither, but I'm not really that tall. So maybe that's why my neck is not like that. Like, I just really would like to have elongated neck, if you know what I mean. So that's why I like to wear the wig with the long hair when I come through. I try to look presentable because I just feel like I'm less bigger. You know what I'm saying? Less bigger. I don't know. 
but I'm not going to be gluing any wigs down. I'm not going to be putting on makeup. You know, I put on a little bit. You know, I got on some lashes and I did my brows, you know, but I'm not about to be dolling my face up, beating my face. Okay. We're not about to do that when it's 104 degrees outside at 10 o'clock in the morning. And I don't know. I just don't like this part of me. This, this part, like, I don't like this. I just don't like this, but I, I really need to learn how to be a lot more comfortable in my skin. And I need to also realize when you get like a certain age, your metabolism, you just gain weight and that sucks. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like I've noticed like people, um, have like celebrities they're like my age maybe a little bit older they have gained weight and then i see people shading them like vivica fox for example they'll talk about her weight she's like what i'm 50 she's got to be like at least like 60 or whatever she look she's earned her time she's earned or her time she ain't got to be skinny thin like that no more girl she is living life and enjoying herself and that's what i'm doing too but i do need to learn how to be a lot more comfortable in my skin so you know now you know i was gonna put on pink but i was like i wore pink last week and i have a lot of pink and i love pink y'all know I, if y'all don't know y'all gonna know today i love pink i love a good pink color i'm a pink girl all right all the way pink girl but anyway so i hope y'all having like a really great day you know what i'm saying um i'm not gonna be on this long time live today well i probably am I'm, I'm, I'm gonna need to stop lying but i have a lunch date with my daughter tati she is taking me out to lunch me she and i and tinky are going to be eating at this place called the yard it's a really nice restaurant it's located in westgate's outlet or tanger outlets out here in glendale arizona it's about 10 minutes away from my home first we're going to drop off mumsy she's going to go get her lashes done and so while she's getting that done we're going to go drive down the street and we're going to go ahead and go to the place to get something to eat now i've been here before i really like it the food is really really great you know what i'm saying and it's affordable the atmosphere is really really nice i love a good place that has nice atmosphere so that's what we're going to go to she's treating mumsy to get her lashes done tati is like the best daughter in the world like when i tell you she's the best daughter in the world she really really is she'd be really looking out for Tati um for mumsy she'd be helping me a lot with her like for her school clothes her school supplies you know what i'm saying when mumsy ever wants any extra money when she wants to go hang out with her friends she always could ask tati and she'll hook her up you know what i'm saying so she always be you know looking out for mumsy and i so am very appreciative just very very grateful to her you know so she wanted to get her nails done for school and she did that on sunday she took her and got her nails done for school her she got a mani and a petty and she also didn't want to get her lashes done for school and so tati already booked her appointment for that now mumsy got a lot of lashes. When I say Mumsy got a lot of lashes, meaning her own natural lashes, I thought she had on some strips one day when I went in her room and bless you, Tinky, um, and come to find out it was it's her own lashes. So she has a lot of lashes. So I'm not really sure what she wants the extensions for, but you know what? Give it a try. See how you like it. You know, just don't lose your own natural eyelashes with it. But um, yeah, we're going to go do that today. So I'm looking forward to that. The only thing I ain't looking forward to is getting out the car, walking through the plaza to get to the restaurant. When I say all of that is because y'all know it's fucking hot out here. When I tell you it's hot out here, girl, it's hot. There's no reason for it to be hot. Like this is not summer. This is hell. People be like, so what is this summer like out there? Well, spring is summer. Okay. When it's spring here, it's summer. And when it's summer, it's hell. So we have spring. We have, we have, th these are our seasons. Okay. We have summer, hell, and fall. Because to me, winter is more or less like fall out here. That's Their winter is very light to me. Like, I'm wearing like a little zip-up hoodie or a little throw-over-your-head hoodie. I'm not putting on no scarf. I'm not putting on no mittens. I'm not doing none of that. You know what I'm saying? I'm just wearing a little zip-up hoodie. It's not cold to me. I mean, but I'm not from here either. But I've been here 11 years, girl, so, but I'm, I'm still not from here. So this, this winter, their winters is fall for me so we got we got we got fall we got summer and we got hell there's really no spring um spring would probably be like the end of winter you know what i'm saying basically that's heating up for summer but then summer is really really hell so i mean that's all i can tell y'all so i don't really like going anywhere i only go outside once a day in the summertime y'all know i've been telling y'all that for weeks now i only go outside once a day which is to take my granddaughter to daycare for my daughter tati and then i'll go run my errands if need be if i have some errands like today i had to go to the post office and drop off uh five packages for my bracelets and my bands my apple watch bands so you know what i'm saying i had to do that and then here i am like i don't really go out after that okay i'll have me like i i, I just won't i just won't there's nothing to do for me in the heat like i'm not trying to die okay so when i tell you i'm not trying to die i'm not really trying to die what i told y'all we could be friends in the in the fall okay we could be friends during the winter time that's cool we can hang out we can run the streets and we can do all that then but come summertime come hell no april's april going not answer your call april will not want to go outside because see with the, the people that i know like the girls the, the women that i like to hang out with or hang around or be with or chill with our friends my friends girl they want to go to the fucking recreational park they want to be doing hula hooping they want to be doing fucking double dutching like a bitch what 
It's 100 and they were well, we'll come out early. Early is 10 o'clock. It's already 100,000 degrees outside. No, I don't be trying to do none of that stuff when it's hot outside. I'm not about to do none of that. You got me You got me messed up. You got you got the wrong April, okay? See me in the wintertime. So we're going to do that today. We're going to have a really great time doing that, which I'm excited about because I do like the place and I like to eat, okay? I ain't even going to front. I do like to eat. I'm not greedy. I'm not saying that I eat all day because I definitely don't. I probably, I do eat like twice a day. So I don't know if that's what you call I like to eat, a person that really likes to eat because I don't really know. I'm a foodie. I like to try to do different things and I love good restaurants with great atmosphere and I like to have good drinks. I bitch love to have a good drink, okay? Yes, so that's what we're going to do. But other than that, you know, I've been just chilling. Really great weekend, quiet. Uh, Saturday, I did drop off my daughter, Nate, to go get her hair done, her hair braided. And her hair, our hair braider is someone that we knew from Schenectady. He was, she's actually was my son Wuzzle's best friend. They was best friends since, like, elementary school, which is Wuzzle's brother's girlfriend. And they've been girlfriend and boyfriend for God knows, like, mad long probably like 15 years, something like that. So they moved out here after my son passed away just to be close to me and to make sure that I'm all right. So Mecca is also a hair braider. So she braids all of my kids' hair, Mumsy's hair. Yeah, she braids Mumsy's hair if she needs, if she's going to get braids, but or she does Nay's hair. So I did that Saturday. I brought, um, I brought, I dropped off Nay to get her hair braided because Nay's car is with Miguel, who is fixing her car. So I did that. Then I went across the street to Winco. If y'all don't know about Winco, I'm not really sure if Winco is like a store that's all over the, the state. And I'm pretty sure, not the state, excuse me, country. I'm pretty sure it's not because it's in, it's owned by the employees. But we have like three of them out here, which is really great. Did you get the comb and the gel and stuff? Okay. Um, which is really, really great. I love Winco. Their prices are super duper affordable. Like when I say super affordable, very, very affordable. You know what I'm saying? Like you can get a whole shopping cart full of groceries, like full shopping cart, like about 160 bucks. Okay. So I love Winco. And then I came home and I just relaxed for a little while. Me and my granddaughter, you know, we ate breakfast. I watched a little bit of TV. Um... I did start creating some bracelets and then I went and picked Nay back up and then we chill for the rest of the day. You know what I'm saying? We chill for the rest of the day, had me a couple of drinks in my house. Okay. And then, you know, I just did what I had to do. Saturday, Sunday, 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 I did the same thing. You know what I'm saying? I watched TV. Now I don't know about you guys, but I love action movies and I love Tom Cruise and I love Mission Impossible. Like I've been a Mission Impossible fan for God knows how long, forever forever so i watched a dead reckoning yesterday and when i tell you that movie is two hours and 43 minutes i was like what the fuck so and, and you know i'm a hard person to sit still for so long i cannot sit still for too long like i gotta get up i might start dusting i might start sweeping i might go make me a sandwich i have to go to the bathroom i have to go sort out my what beads am i gonna use then i'll get up and go see what's going on in the other living room like i do shit like that so i'm constantly pausing or rewinding because i'm talking to my grandkids or I'm talking to my kids, so I'm always having to rewind. So two hours and 43 minutes turned out to be probably, like, for me, five fucking hours, okay? Straight up, like, five fucking hours. But the movie was really good. You know, I watched it on Amazon Prime. I don't know if it was Amazon that I was watching it on or MGM, but, you know, you know what I'm those services, so I watched that. And then I went to back to watch it now. You know what, girl? Let me tell y'all. If y'all want to watch a really good series, a television series, because I was watching this back in 2020, you know, when I think when it first aired, when it first came out, you know, it was season one, and it was... Um, um, it's a show called Snowpiercer and I watched the whole season with my ex-husband because we was watching it together he was here and then we watched like the second season I think like the first episode and then you know we had to wait like another week for it to come on and then I kind of like forgot about it no excuse me we watched the whole first season together we never even got to watch the second season we watched the entire first season together and then you know I had to wait a year for it to come back out by then I'd be forgetting shit so I did honestly forget about the series once season two came around like I just be forgetting shit so now it's on season four okay girl so it's called snow piercer and it's great i love the series if you're not aware of what it is the world came to not an end but the world earth froze and the degrees would be like negative 125 degrees outside so as soon as you step outside your ass is freezing you're turning into a popsicle and that's it you done you dead okay now before the world froze and the temperatures plunged down to like 100 negative 125 degrees there was this character named Melanie she was an engineer and she worked with this other engineer I do believe Wilford was an engineer the guy Wilford Joseph Wilford that you know he was like the money man he was the one who kind of like funded her creation of this actual train along with other investors so they created a train Melanie created a train that had 1,000 and I do believe 47 cars 
all together. 1,047 train cars. You know what I'm saying? There was there was the tail end of the car where the poor, poor people lived at. And basically, those are the people that were the stowaways. And then there was third class, and there was second class, and there was first class. You know what I'm saying? So this train could never stop. It had to constantly move. And they built tracks around the whole entire earth. You know what I'm saying? And this train has to keep going. If it stops, then the temperatures are going to plunge in the train, and everybody's going to die. So it takes the train at revolution to get around the earth, which is 365 days. That's what they're calling it, a revolution. So this train just never stops. It never stops. You know what I'm saying? They have suits that they can put on that they can use if they need to go outside the train while it is moving, but they'll slow it down to fix anything. Or sometimes they'll go out just to be in the snow, like to get samples and see what's going on with the earth. But anyway, the series is amazing. It's called Snowpiercer, and I absolutely love it. If you have not heard of it, check it out. There are four seasons. If you need something really good to watch, it's called Snow Piercer, and it's amazing. I absolutely love it. I cannot remember what actual network is the creator of this series. I want to say it's AMC. That's what I'm thinking, but I might, I'm not really too sure. But <clears throat> If you are aware of the series, let me know your thoughts on that. You know what I'm saying? And if you haven't checked out from the series from, like I was telling you about, about a few weeks back, it's an MGM original series. You guys got to watch that. Like, it's on season, um, it's... Sony has two seasons, but the third one is coming up this fall, and I absolutely love it. But yes, you guys, check that out. I will, you know, if I can remember, I'll... I'll put the information for each one in the description box below. But other than that, that's what I did. I started rewatching the series. I had to go back. Like, I really did try to start from season two. But, girl, I ain't watched it in, like, a few years. So, I forgot. It's not like I forgot everything. But, you know, my mind was refreshed as I was watching it. So, I did that. And when I tell you I binge watched the shit out of that series, I binge watched the shit out of it. I'm on, like, season three now, episode, like, five. And there's only four seasons so far. I'm not really sure if they're going to be five seasons because I haven't gotten to four yet to be able to tell you. But it's a really great season. It's a really great series. But anyway, other than that, we're going to just jump into this before. We have a sponsor for this week's video, which is a company that I've already introduced to you guys. And I did this a few weeks ago, and their name is Derm Rays. So they do have the mask. And I did show you guys, they have the LED therapy mask, which I did showcase you guys in a recent um real talk and this is it i did show the details of it but they also did send me an extension to that which is their led silicone neck and chest mask so you can actually put this on with the actual face mask and it will allow you to get just all type of you know it revitalizes and renews your skin so i noticed that a lot of people not a lot of people because i can't speak for everybody but a lot of some people do get wrinkled here in the breast area or neck area. Now, I don't know about me or you guys that's watching that's melanated, but you know, this is supposed to be really good for rejuvenating and you know, just renewing your skin. And it just probably, probably really feels really good. So, it does come with a strap so that way you can strap yourself up. And it has all of these little lights to this. Now, this is a really cool system. I was actually waiting to receive this part before I could even use the mask. So, I haven't gotten around to using it as of yet because this came to me last week. Okay? Okay, it was supposed to come at the same time, but it did not. So now I'm going to get to use it. I'm going to try it out and see what it's hitting for. But if you're looking for a great system that's going to rejuvenate, revitalize, renew your skin, then you can check out Derm Rays. They have several different um, devices. They also have devices where you can actually use for your armpits. Like if you want to shave, they have laser hair removal shavers, which I have not gotten around to using because I don't really grow a lot of hair like that. Very patchy. My legs do not get like that. But but this one is a 15 minute treatment. It has um, LED power lights. It's just a therapy treatment for light therapy treatments. You know what I'm saying? Um, and it's just this LED silicone neck and chest mask. So this is silicone. So it's not going to be anything harsh against your skin. They say you use it like three to, I don't know, probably like three to four times a week. But I haven't used mine yet because I was waiting for this. I'm not going to do the, I just wanted to wait for the other piece. So like I said, their name is Germ Rays. And I did feature them in a few videos back of real talk so you know if you guys are interested in those led therapy masks or such then definitely want to check them out i did read really good reviews about them so you know what i'm saying 
I just haven't gotten around to using mine yet, but it does come with one of these cute little bags so that way you can store it and take it out the box. And each piece, each one comes with that. The mask does and the neck one does. So I'll link that. And also our favorite sponsor of this week is Made by Muff Accessories. So girl, look what. I've gotten really good with doing my website and just actually developing my website on my own. Now when I say this to you, because I used to have to pay someone to create my website. And this was many years ago. This was about probably like 12 13, 14 years ago, I did have my other website, which was called Smooch's Accessories. And that was developed for me by someone I knew. I, of course, I had to pay for her. And, you know, I had to sit around and wait. It took her like a year to do my website. Like, she kept prolonging it. You know, when my website, Going With The Wind Wigs, came out, you know, I really wasn't too savvy with creating the website. But as time went on, trial and error, I've learned new things. I revamped my entire website, you know what I'm saying? And then I just started learning more and more things. So I've learned how to do a drop-down menu, you know what I'm saying? There isn't like a lot of tutorials, but it's a really great website if you want to you know what i'm saying host uh, or host items on a website it's called weebly and you can use the, use the free version which i do because you you know it's going with the wind wigs .com. that's how it's free because i'm still advertising their name or you can just pay for a server you can you know whatever but i learned some new things but girl listen amongst that i have been making some really really great um bands apple watch bands and i'm so damn proud of myself girl okay what look now you know my grandson he's three and he'll be four in october and he is autistic so i did create some excuse me but the charms are like kind of like moving around um maybe hopefully i'll have the pictures done so where i can insert the pictures but these charms are all for autis autism and you know i created one for autism and of course it does come with the complimentary bracelet so i made that one this weekend and i made this one this weekend last night which is for our healthcare workers and i do apologize that the actual charms are like turning around as i'm showing you guys but this is for my healthcare workers you know doctors nurses you know this is for them and this is charms of nothing but healthcare worker stuff so i'll definitely have to show a picture of these things because you really can't see the charms because they're dangling i created this one right here which is i just called i think i'm going to call this one iced you know a black and white one with the complimentary i'm gonna definitely take pictures and throw them in here so that way you guys can really be able to see them but anyway so make sure you check out my website um it's going with the wind wigs .com. i will definitely link everything below for you guys so that way you can check it out i do have custom made custom made apple watch bands and custom made bracelets along with when my wigs when i do have wigs they are there but they just go really really quick but yes, you guys, so let's get into this real talk. If you have a real talk that you want me to talk about, girl, go right on ahead and you can send it to made, oh, excuse me, made by Muff. Muffin is my lovers 2012 at gmail.com or April's Real Talk at gmail.com. Please make sure to put in the subject line a real talk so that I know it's a real talk. And if you want to change the name of yourself or the people you're talking about in the email, you can do so. Please let me know. So if not, just you know, tell me what you want me to call you. But on that note, girl, let's just get into this because I've been running my mouth way too long. muffins i hope all is well please you can call me dana for this email please i recently was fired from my job due to issues with this bitch and when i say an issue i mean i put them hands on her since she kept running her damn mouth all the time i was cool with being fired because i knew it was going to happen once i put my hands on her so i wasn't upset about it i was not upset at all about being let go i was more over this chick running her mouth and being disrespectful to me so by then i was fed up especially since no one at my job was going to do anything about the issue at hand that i had with her after speaking with several people luckily i found a new job within a couple of weeks of being fired i was happy about this new job due to higher pay and a better position and altogether better job. 
So here's the thing. I live in a small town in Utah. Nothing to brag about. Everyone knows everyone. There isn't too many men to choose from, I guess. So this bitch ends up messing with my brother. When I say this bitch, I'm talking about the one that I used to work with. How I found out is I go over to my brother's place. He promised to work on my car, and I noticed a familiar-looking car, but I really thought nothing of it because when they make one car, they make plenty of them. So I really ain't think too hard on it. I walk into my brother's place because I have a set of keys, and he was there in the kitchen cooking. I come in, and he starts telling me about someone he's met whose car he's been working on. I'm listening to his story, and he starts describing her and then tells me her name, and it's that bitch from my old job. Now, mind you, they have already gone on a date, and he's been talking to her April for a minute. And when I tell you I'm pissed, I'm overly pissed about it. I told my brother weeks ago about the situation at my job and how I got fired. But, of course, he did not know and put two and two together. When he was telling me about her while I was at his house, I never disclosed to my brother that she was the bitch that got me fired. I just continued to let him talk. I ain't saying nothing because, honestly, I want the opportunity to knock her damn head off. My brother is a dog, and I don't mean that in a mean way, but he never keeps a girlfriend. He basically uses them and then throws them out. And I know if I tell him she's the one who got me fired, he will probably say something to her. I just really want the opportunity to run into her again so I can knock her head off because she had major shit to say when we was working together. And because of her, I was fired. She's fake as hell and pretends to be something she isn't. I'm not really sure if my brother knows, but she has been to jail, arrested for petty larceny, talks about any and everyone, has four kids that her mother and father have custody of. She has used the N word, which means she is not one of us, if you know what I mean. Now, I don't have any problem with any inter interracial relationships, but I won't stand for, but what I won't stand for is them using the N word. What do you think I should do? Should I say something to my brother about the work incident again and who she really is? Or should I allow him to use her up and throw her to the streets? In case you're wondering why I put my hands on her at work, we got into a heated discussion regarding invoices and payroll. And this heifer had the nerve to call me a black bitch. This was during a weekly meeting. So I worked in the billing department at a nursing home and she came out of her mouth way too many times. But this time she said the black bitch part. And that is when I went up to her and slap some color into her face. What would you do? What do you think of all this? Thank you, Dana. Could you imagine if somebody slapped color into your face? Like, what the hell? I already know what that means. Like, she slapped color into her face. Like, if you slap me, of course, my face is going to... Well, it all depends on how hard you slap me. But um, my face is going to be red too. Shit, it'd be too hot outside, my face be red. It'd be too cold outside when I hear, but my face be red. So, she smacked color into this bitch face and I, I mean I ain't, I don't like to condone violence but I'm just saying if you call me a black bitch I'm gonna have to smack color into your face too let me just say this now I get the part where she's used like derogatory words or wording or just negative wording and just disrespectful wording me personally I don't really care for the word the n-word but we've all used it I'm not about to sit here and say I ain't have it because I've used it in videos too okay um but I really don't think that anybody should say it, including myself. I just don't really think that it's the best word to use. I don't really feel like only black people should be able to use the word because I just don't. I just don't really feel like nobody should use the word. And yeah, we do slip up and we use the word. We may say, you know, the N word from time to time, but I don't really think that anybody should use the word. However, if this girl who's not like us, okay, like Kendra says, Kendrick says, they not like us. If she's not like us and she's using the N word, I would definitely feel some type of way. And if you call me a black bitch, I'm going to feel some type of way. Now I have used the term black bitch before. I have used that wording before but I'm black. And, and I guess that's the same as saying the N word, but either way, I don't think it's like a, a good word to say for either race, the BB word or the N word. I just don't think so. But here we are, we at work and you got this woman who's coming out of her mouth and she's being disrespectful and she's of another race. Okay. I don't really care what other race you are, but you're not, um, black. You're not, you're not like us. So you can't be disrespectful like that. Now it's one thing to just call somebody a bitch. Like I will call you a bitch in a second, but here we got somebody that's not like us of another race and she's calling her BB and she's used the N word. So not cool. But to me, even if you are at work, we're in a work environment and you calling me out of my name, I don't give a fuck what word it is. Girl, you crazy. 
We at work. Well, this is where we be professional. Stop running your mouth. Now, she said that nobody took care of the situation, which means that she said she also said that she ended up putting the hands on her because no one ever seemed to take care of the situation, which means that she's already complained about. We're going to call her Sarah. She's already complained about Sarah, but nobody seemed fit to take care of the situation. So Dana took the situation into her own hands and took care of it. Let me tell y'all this. Now, I have been, when I've been at work before, I've gotten into altercations with supervisors um, before, which landed me uh, fired. You know what I'm saying? And that's cool, too. I'm not saying that, I'm not saying y'all should go out there and, and be disrespectful to somebody that you work with, but you're not going to disrespect me. Who the hell wants to get up every day, first of all? Who the hell wants to get up every day and go to work? Like, we have to go to work because we need to survive. But I really don't feel like if I go to work, that's my place of employment. I'm not trying to come here and be disrespected or be harassed. That's not what I'm here for. You know what I'm saying? This is a place where I'm here to make money. So I don't feel like I should be coming in here and you got somebody working with me that's running their fucking mouth. Just running off at the lips, just yapping, 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 like flapping your gums. We're not going to do that here. Now, it doesn't matter to me if you just talking to me friendly all day or you talking to me disrespectful all day. I don't want you to be talking to me too much in general because I don't really be wanting to be at work and be doing the most. But if it's a friendly environment, then girl, maybe we could talk all day and laugh it up and kiki it all. But it becomes a very hostile environment when you got somebody that's being disrespectful, saying some shady shit, and just don't know her place, her lane, where to sit the fuck down at STFU, okay? So you've already took it upon yourself to talk to the higher-ups about taking care of the situation, handling it, handling Sarah, but ain't nobody do nothing. Ain't nobody handle Sarah. So I'm not really sure, but some part of me wants to feel like the people, the higher-ups that Dana went to to get the situation calmed down and stopped, they wasn't like us either. They not like us either. And I don't like to put a lot of race shit in this, but sometimes it do be your own people too that just don't give a fuck and just be like, you could do, you could take care of it yourself. Either way, nobody handled the situation for her and she handled it on her own. So in my opinion, how would I have handled the situation? I probably would have ended up putting a pause on her too. I mean, I hate to say that I'm a violent person because I'm definitely not, but there's a lot of things that I don't tolerate. And if I've put up with you on enough times and I've even went up, so far as to report you and still nothing has been done and you still running off at the mouth, then I'm probably going to end up putting the hands on you too. I'm not saying that that's something that should be done, but a person could really take but so much. So now Dana has found out that Sarah, her ex coworker, is dating her brother. She don't really want to tell her brother that this is the girl that got her fired because she wants another opportunity to knock her fucking head off. I guess she really wants to knock her head off. Like the slap or what, and whatever else she did to her at the job place was not enough. So she really wants to put the hands on her. And she don't want to tell her brother because she wants the opportunity to be able to run into her again and knock her head off. And she's wondering, what would I do? What do I suggest? She also hasn't told her brother the info the 411 whatever the deets okay the t on sarah she hasn't told her brother that sarah got four kids that she doesn't take care of that are in the custody of her parents she didn't tell her um, what else was it that she'd be running her fucking mouth and talking about any and everybody using the n-word she has not told her brother about any of these um issues with sarah because she just feels like she just gonna let her brother use her up and throw her back to the streets now what would i do in a situation listen Listen, Dana, I understand that you want to knock the girl head off. Trust me, I really, really do. But sometimes as grown-ups, we just have to let shit go. You know what I'm saying? You already slapped her. You already slapped the color into her face. So therefore, you already gave her her lesson learned. You know, hopefully she realizes from that situation that she cannot go around calling nobody a BB or the N-word. But you know what? There are some people that just don't learn. Now, should you run up on her and put the hands on her and knock her head off? Let's just think about it like this. Do you really think that this girl, Sarah, who's not like us, is really worth your time and energy of possibly going to jail and being arrested like she was, you said there? You know what I'm saying? Do you really think like this low-life scumbag is really worth it? She done got arrested. She done went to jail for petty larceny. She don't have none of her kids. She uses the N-word. It's just enough shit with her. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, do you really feel like this person is really worth you losing your freedom over or possibly getting arrested and then having to waste your money by bailing out and then going back and forth to court and maybe possibly losing your new job due to maybe being arrested if you knock this girl head off and having to miss work? 
You know what I'm saying? Or your job finding out that you got arrested for knocking somebody's head off. Do you really think that she's worth any of this, of any of these things that you might have to possibly go through? Like, this is what I'm trying to tell you to think about. Like, yeah, there are people that I'm even wanting to knock their head off too. Like, let's just be for real. There's quite a few people that I be wanting to knock their motherfucking head off. But at the end of the day, it's like, are you really, really even worth my time and energy? Like, no, you're not. And sometimes the best thing that you can do for a person is ignore them and act like they not even not, and act like they're not even relevant. They don't even exist. Okay. That's the best thing that you can do for yourself and for them. And when I say for them, it's because they hate people hate to be ignored. They hate to be felt like they are irrelevant. They hate to be felt like you just don't even want to be bothered with them. People don't like that. So that's the best thing that you can do for yourself is just to ignore her. Now, as for your brother telling him the situation, I would definitely let him know, like, yo, this is the girl that got me fired, who uses the N-word, who don't have her children, who's been to jail. I would definitely tell him. Why not? That's your brother. If you love him, then you, you, I would definitely tell him. But to knock her head off is something that I definitely wouldn't want to do because I don't think that I would want to risk any of these things that I just mentioned to you over some girl that is not like us or just somebody in general. I don't even give a fuck what color or race you are. I really don't want to waste my time and energy and money on anybody going to jail, getting arrested. You know what I'm saying? I've already been there and done that. Been arrested, went to jail for two weeks from knocking somebody's motherfucking head off. That was me. Okay. But see, it wasn't just knocking their head off. It was attempting, you know, I'm alive in somebody from the way that I knocked their fucking head off, you know, my ex-husband. So I don't, you know, and I missed out on two weeks of my life, you know what I'm saying? Because of the situation. Um, I missed out on my kids for two weeks. You know what I'm saying? I missed out on my life for two weeks. Shit, my eyes were swollen because I was crying all the time. I'll be for real with you. I was motherfucking crying in there. I didn't want to be there. Who the hell wants to be there? So I missed out on these opportunities, these things in my life because of him. So I really don't feel like, you know, that anybody should go around knocking anybody's head off if it's not deemed necessary. Now, if you fuck with my family, you damn right I'm about to knock your motherfucking head off. But if it's because of somebody that's ignorant, belligerent, toxic, and just stupid, girl, no. Now, if she, if you see her in public and she's so cold, put her comes up to you or be disrespectful to you, then that's your, that is your opportunity right there to knock her motherfucking head off. But I, I really would still be very, very cautious about knocking her head off in public. Because if she don't put no hands on you, you really don't want to knock her head off because you can still go to jail even if she was harassing you. But I understand that sometimes people cannot help situations and shit happens. You know, it's a reflex. People run their mouth and your hands is the reflex. Not saying that that's the thing to do, but sometimes we have to learn to avoid a lot of certain situations, especially when we're, and we're grown. And, you know, you know, I, as a person, let me tell you something. I'm going to just be honest with you guys. I found, I found like it'd be real hard for myself in the past. I would find it real hard to walk away from certain situations. You know what I'm saying? Like it could be somebody in public that's done something to me or pissed me off. And you know, we get to arguing. I always found it hard to walk away from the situation. Like, bitch, I'm going to come up to you. What's up? And I'm going to argue with you and I'm going to cuss you out and I'm going to go off on you. I've realized as I've matured and gotten older, there are people out here in this world that are put here for a reason, you know what I'm saying? And that's for your downfall. Though they don't know that because but they may not know that that they're they may not know that they're out here on this earth for your downfall. But when I say that is because the devil has put them in place. And there's always somebody out here that's going to try and ruin your good day, your good vibes, your life, your financial, whatever, your situation, your stability. There are people put in place to do so. You know what I'm saying? Demonic people. And so I learned as I got older that some people are just really, really not worth my energy, really, really not worth my time. You know what I'm saying? Or just me arguing with them. It's just really not worth it to me. And I realized that walking away from sometimes people is makes me the bigger adult. Now, I used to find it hard to walk away from certain situations because that's that's just who I am. And it's not even just who I am, but growing up, I was bullied. You know what I'm saying? I was called names all the way up into high school. Freckle face, Medusa, pissy yellow. I was bullied by kids, by teens. I was bullied even by my aunts because they would say things. Well, they really wasn't my aunts. They was my cousins, but they were older than me. So, you know, they would call me pit face. And the reason why they would call me pit face is because I have freckles in my face. Like I don't really foresee them being pits, but you know what I'm saying? So to me, that was like a sign of bullying. So I got tired of being bullied. I got tired of being humiliated. I got tired of being ridiculed. And this is when I started like arguing back with people. And this is when I find it hard to walk away from the situation. But as I grew and I matured, I realized like some people, some of y'all ain't even worth my motherfucking time because 
I'll just go off. And, and sometimes, you know what? It's not even worth arguing. I'm not about to stand here and argue with you. Nope, 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 nope. Not doing this. Because while you keep doing this, I'm going to be ready to just do this. And and I'm not about to be going back to jail. I'm too old to go to jail. And I just don't really want to be there. Like, there's nothing to do in jail. What I'm supposed to do? I can't make no braces. I can't do no videos. So I don't really want to be there. You know what I'm saying? So I just feel like Dana... Tell your brother the situation and who he's dating and let him know. And if you have a picture of the girl, maybe show him so that y'all can confirm that it's really her. But I wouldn't go looking for trouble. Don't go looking for trouble. Be the bigger person and the grown up and just continue on. As long as you don't see her in public and she don't put her no hands on you, then that's fine. But don't go looking for trouble. That's one thing that you don't want to do is go looking for trouble. You understand what I'm saying? Just don't do that because we too grown for that. And you risking too much that you have over some bitch that ain't even like us. Straight up. Okay? So let Dana know what you would do and we're gonna move on to the next so she one. titled this real talk my mother is an alcoholic hi miss april i would like to thank you for reading this email my name is angelica and i have been watching you since your new york days in the bathroom i started watching you when i was 17 learning how to do my half wigs from you and may i say you have taught me so much when it comes to blending my wigs i also loved real talk and i would just listen to you and watch you and you have always been so blunt honest and real and relatable thank you so that is why I come to you today. I love my mother. I am now 34 and I live with my mom, me and my son, who is 12 years old. I came back to live with her after a long drawn out divorce from a man who I really thought loved me, but come to find out he was loving the same sex when I found out he was messing around on me. Okay. So I came back home to live with my mother and have been there with her for two years. She lived in a whole different state from me when I was married, so I felt it was best to come back and help her out. Since I have been living with her, she has been doing nothing but drinking heavily daily. That is the reason I honestly feel like she and my father divorced, but she will never admit to it. I work, I work, and my son, when he's home or not in school, he's either um, with my mother or he visits with family. I come home to my mother drunk, sprawled out in the couch, or wherever she can make it into the house. This is constantly. During her drunken fits, she becomes real violent and verbally abusive towards myself and even towards my son. I'm really trying to help her out with herself, her home, her bills, and just being there for her. But this entire drinking thing is so stressful. She has gotten into accidents, not hitting anyone, but poles, hitting mailboxes, and has also gotten her license suspended for now three years. So, of course, I will bring her where she needs to go. But she still drives without my assistance since she does have her own car. Miss April, I'm so ready to leave her home and find somewhere that is more like home for myself and my son. I am just afraid to leave her alone. I'm so afraid she will really harm herself or drink herself to death. I don't know how she will feel about me leaving because she has said things such as she cannot be without me. She doesn't want to be alone and I don't want to hurt her, but I'm so tired of the abuse. I'm tired of her drinking and my son is tired of it as well. I don't know if I will financially be in the best situation, but I am good at budgeting. And at this point, it doesn't matter. I just am ready to leave. What is your point of view on this, please? Thank you, Angelica. Let me tell y'all something. Y'all know I don't deal. I don't deal well with drunks. I, I don't do do well with alcoholics. I don't. I don't. Okay, that's the number one reason why I don't speak to my ex-husband. I don't allow him to call me. He's blocked because he do the drunk calling. He do the drunk texting. And when I say you tell you he does the drunk calling, y'all know I showed you on a video. This motherfucker has called my phone thirty times back to back within God knows how many minutes. Okay. But yeah, and when you're calling me up drunk, you're being disrespectful to me. And like, I don't, he just, he's one of those drunks that feel like he's Hercules. And he's like five, 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 six, five, seven. And he feel like he Hercules and he run his mouth. You know what I'm saying? And then when you run your mouth, you get knocked the fuck in the head. So this is the reason why I did go to jail. You know what I'm saying? Because he was drunk running his mouth. But how do I, I, me personally, I don't like drunks. I don't deal well with drunks. My sister's stepfather, excuse me, my sister's father, who was my stepfather at the time, he would drink. But he was a good drunk. He wasn't like, you know what? He was really, really nice when he would be drunk. You know what I'm saying? So, but I still didn't really like that because it's annoying too. Drunk people, intoxicated people, alcoholic people are, are annoying. They're fucking annoying. And then they get you out of your whole vibe. And I don't like anybody to get me out of my character, my vibe. I don't like that. And I just feel like this. You need to just go somewhere and get yourself and your life together. You know what I'm saying? Now, when you become verbally abusive and violent and because you're drinking, girl, look, it's time for you to leave. Like, seriously, Angelica, it's time for you to pack up and move. I understand that you want to be there for your mother and you want to take care of her and you want to help her with shit, but she's not even helping her own self. And it's sad that I have to say this about your mother because we only have one mother. So, of course, we want to be there for them, especially if they was there for us. Of course, we want to love on them. And, we, of course, we want to just be the best child that we can be for our parents. But if she's an alcoholic and she is 
being verbally abusive to just not you, but also your son, then it is time for you to leave. It is time for you to move out. You know, maybe she'll see this as a sign for herself to get help because she not only pushed your father away, but now she is pushing you and her grandson away as well. And it's unfortunate, but sometimes you have to just let them learn on their own. Tough love is something that you really, really need to do for some people because they just don't get it. You know, there are people that you have told shit over and over and over and over and over again, but they just don't get it. So it's like, you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and I'm just going to allow you to do what you need to do on your own because you're just not getting it. And that's okay. Get that shit on your own. But I'm not going to be here as your, your verbally punching bag, like your verbally abusive punching bag. Like, no. And your mother too old and grown for that shit. If you're 34 and your son, your son is 12, then God knows how old she is, but she got to be at least my age or maybe a couple years older, which means you too old to be sitting around getting drunk every fucking day, falling on the couch or falling wherever you can in the house. There's no fucking way. And I don't know about you, but don't you wake up from like a hangover or like your belly is hurting from being drunk. Like I've had drinks before and I've woken up sick. Like when I tell you I've gotten drunk quite a few times, not like outside in public because I don't do that, but in my own home, I have gotten drunk. And the next day after that, I felt like so sick to my belly, like sick, you know, having to use the bathroom, not vomiting, but you know, number two. And so it messes you up like that. And like, I don't like that feeling at all. And like, here's my thing. Why would anybody want to be drinking to get drunk? Like, where is that like a good feeling? I don't get drunk. Like when I drink my little wine coolers or like my little buzz balls, those give me like a nice, I don't, I can't say tipsy cause I'm not tipsy either, but it gives me, what is the word for it? Um, I, I'm not drunk at all and I'm not even tipsy. I, sometimes I think it just tastes good and I'm not, it's not really even doing much for me, but it, it's tipsy is the word. It got me a little lit. I don't know, maybe a little bit tipsy, but I'm still functionable. I'm not slurring my words. I'm not you know, fall to the side. You know what I'm saying? I'm not doing any of those things. I just feel like, you know, it, it just relaxes me. It relaxes me. Like you drink a glass of wine, same thing. I like to drink a buzz ball and it does the same thing. Or some people like to drink a beer and may relax and the same thing a buzz ball does to me. But I don't understand why people like to get drink to get drunk. Like how the fuck do you want to be drunk every day? That's got to be like the worst feeling in the world to an alcoholic. Like how do you want to be drunk every fucking day? Like, that's just disgusting. And I can I can totally relate to how she's feeling because my ex-husband was like that. Now, he wasn't getting drunk every day. He wasn't doing that, but he does that now because, you know, he lives where he lives and we're not together. So I guess now he feels like, well, I can just do whatever I want. And that's fine. You grown, you do whatever suits you. But people that drink every day and get drunk every day, that alcoholics, you get like, what is it, cirrhosis of the liver or some shit like that? Something like that, you know what I'm saying? I just find like it to be utterly disgusting to be one to be drunk all the time. Like I know it's a, like a disease. It is like a disease, just like drugs is a disease. And there are places for that. And sometimes you just got to let the person get down on their luck. Sometimes you can't say anything to them. They're just going to have to find out the hard way. You know, it's unfortunate though for you, um, Angelica, that you have to remove yourself and your son from the home in a situation for your mom to be on her own to figure it out. And that sucks because I know that you're going to be very worried about her. And I know that you're going to be probably walking around on eggshells wanting to check up on her all the time. But you know what? You have to do what's best for yourself and your child. And this is what I'm going to tell you. If you continue to allow your son to live in that type of situation, it is called child child neglect because you have him in a abusive, toxic situation and you're not removing him from it. So that is a form of child neglect. Okay. And God forbid that your mother does something to him physically and it's reported. It's called a form of child neglect. And here you are, you're going to be in trouble with the state because you did not remove your son and yourself from the environment. So I don't think I would want to risk losing my son or risk being part of the CPS crew to my mother's drinking. She's grown. She's going to have to figure it out on her own. Now, maybe there are some things that you can do to prevent her from harming herself. Take your take her car keys. You don't have to tell her verbally that I'm taking your car keys, but I would just take her car keys and tuck them in my purse and not allow her to have them back ever. She's going to be looking for them for God knows how long, but she has no business driving anyway. So therefore, because of the situation, if you do decide to leave and move out on your own, I would definitely take my mother's car keys. So that way I don't have to worry so much about her driving around drunk while I'm not living with her. That way she's now confined to the home. And if she really needs to go somewhere, she's going to have to contact you for a ride. That's the one first thing that I definitely would do is remove her keys from the home. So that way you don't have to worry so much about her when you're not there. 
But I really feel like, you know what, your mother is grown and it's her time to shine. When I say it's her time to shine, that means it's time for her to get her life together. It's time for her to flourish and it's time for her to do the right thing. And you might just be the person that's going to be able to get her to do that by leaving. Now, she doesn't want to be alone. I totally get that. Who wants to be alone? Like when I tell you I love being here with my daughters, I love them living here with me because I'm able to have company. I have someone to talk to and I have my grandkids. So I would never want to live alone myself. I would never want to be alone. But I don't want to live with somebody and take up and put up with their abuse either. Like, look, we're going to have to, uh, we're going to have to pump the brakes on some things. Like your mother doesn't want to be alone. She doesn't want to live alone. She's happy that she's there. You're there with her. Then she needs to prove that. And she needs to do right by you. She also needs to do right by her son, but mainly she really needs to do right by herself. You know what I'm saying? So I just really feel like it's in your best interest to move. Now, as far as you thinking that you may not be financially suitable or, it might not be financially good for you all the time. Let me tell you something. And you did say you were good at budgeting your money. That's a great thing. But when we become more, what's the word for it? When we just become more grown and on our own, we find ways to deal with situations. We work around situations. You know what I'm saying? We work around situations. We figure out there are programs that we can use. You know what I'm saying? If you have issues with like finding food or such, then listen, there are pantries, and I'm pretty sure there are pantries in your area. There are also the Department of Social Services. So if you're not receiving any type of child support from your ex-husband, then I would definitely go and file for that. So that way you can have extra income. If you are receiving child support, but you still feel like you're in like a situation where you're not going to be able to afford certain things, I would definitely reach out to my community and find out where are certain programs and things that may help me if I am ever in need. Never feel like you cannot do something, okay? Because that's when you test it. And when you feel like you cannot do something, girl, let me tell you, you do it. I, I, I'll never forget this. Um, and it's, it's humbled me for the rest of my life. You know, I was never born with a silver spoon in my mouth, but I was a single mom, you know what I'm saying? And at the time I had two kids. And like I told you a few weeks ago, social services, welfare, they was paying my rent and my electricity bill. So of course I was able to be taken care of and they was giving me food stamps and things, but I never had cash. I worked around it. I would wash my clothes in the tub because I didn't have a washing machine at the time and I couldn't afford to go to the washer. I would have me a little washing board and I would wash me and my kids clothes and I would hang them up in the yard on a rack or the line that I made. You know what I'm saying? I was able to budget. I was able to, when I did have money, I was able to budget and I was able to get the things that I needed. I knew that there were pantries and things that would give out diapers or toilet paper and things like that. So I was okay. You know what I'm saying? And it made me work harder for the things that I wanted and have now. I'll be honest with you guys. I never seen my, back then when I look at my, when I, when I was back then, I never seen this for myself. You know what I'm saying? When I was back then washing the clothes in the tub, you know, I just felt like this poor girl who was never going to be or have anything. And so I never seen myself where I'm at now. And I know that, but I will say this, I'm very proud of where I've become. I'm very proud of who I've become and how I've become in my life. And I owe that all to just my, my hard work and just my motivation and I owe it to my kids. Like, never doubt yourself. Like, you know, we all doubt ourselves, but never doubt yourself to the point where you just feel like you just can't do it and you don't do it. You know what I'm saying? I, I Back then, I thought that I was never going to have a car. I was never going to have anything. This is how I used to think of myself. And I guess that made me work a little bit harder. And it did make me work harder and get jobs, you know, get better jobs and move forward and then start new things. And I found new things about myself and my little side hustles. But Never feel like you can't do anything. Never never knock yourself because that'd be the devil. You know what I'm saying? Don't let him take over. Don't let him consume your thoughts with negative shit. Always feel like you can. You know what I'm saying? Trying. If you try, that means you never give up. As long as you keep trying, that means you ain't never give up. You know what I'm saying? So keep trying and hopefully your mother will try to get herself clean. And maybe you talk to her about programs to help her. But I really feel like it's your time to shine as well, Angelica. I think it's your time and your son's time to shine and move forward with your life. And just still be there for your mother. But, you know what I'm saying, allow her to shine too because she's going to have to take care of herself. And she's going to have to do right by her own self. You know what I'm saying? Alcoholics are no fun at all. But when they become abusive verbally and physically, then it's your time to leave, regardless of who they are. And I don't think that anybody should take any type of abuse. That's just point blank, period. OK, but on that note, you guys, I'm about to go. I'm about to go have lunch with my daughter. So and my grandson. So I hope you all have like an amazing blessed day. Let each one, each lady know down in the comments how you would feel about the situation and how you would handle it. I love you all. Make sure you check out Derma Ray if you are interested in any type of ther therapy mask. And girl, make sure you check out Muffins. It's my lover's website, which is going with the 
thewindwigs.webly.com, made by Muff Accessories. I know y'all girls be wanting to be wearing Apple watch pants. Why not get an Apple watch band that was designed by your girl, okay? And like I said, if you have any ideas for just designs for the bands, let me know in the comments. I would love to hear you guys' thoughts on my Apple watch bands, or, or I also would love to hear your thoughts on new ideas for it as well. You know what I'm saying? But I love you all. Stay Diva on Devolicious. You know what I'm saying? Make sure you rate, comment, and subscribe to this video and share it. And you know what I'm saying? Just be blessed. Enjoy yourself. Stay safe. And I will definitely see y'all in the next one. Bye.